Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's the boy Nitz so coming back with another Bulls Eye of a tutorial here today on the channel. I wanted to talk about Miss Whitney Houston, the queen of pop, the queen of soul. I wanted to talk about how to get some of those clean um, pop vocals, those mainstream vocals, and I want to build a little chain for her vocal. The main thing about Whitney Houston, if I had the blessing, the opportunity of recording her RIP, what I would do is I would have her sing the actual scratch vocal for me in the studio. So as an engineer, I always try to give myself a little advantage. You know, when I'm in the studio with the artist, I like to talk to them, you know, get get them in the mood, get them in the vibe, the message of the song, and also the personality of the person through me, you know, doing the small talk, communicating with them, and put it into the music. So that's what I always try to do when I'm a producer or I'm recording somebody. I always just have a little side conversation with them, asking them how they're doing. All that stuff is a part of the job, and it makes it easier for me to get a great um, sound. So next thing, I would probably have something like a Q10. You know, back in the day, they didn't have the opportunity to have all these different types of uh, EQ shapes when it came to all of the different bands. So usually with something like a pop vocal, I would not be too aggressive with the EQ. Usually with somebody as talented as Whitney Houston, you know, who's incredible at controlling their voice, I probably wouldn't be too invasive with my processing. I would be looking to how I can maximize the strengths of the vocal and minimize the weaknesses. So I probably wouldn't roll off too much of the loan. And with somebody like Whitney Houston, who's very soulful, you know, she got a lot of power. Ah! when she's doing all that a part of that power and that energy is the low end so i wouldn't be too aggressive with it probably do a gentle slope and i probably wouldn't boost any top at all either i would just be trying to shape the vocal inside of the track using the frequency so you know the human ear understands that too you know based on the frequency content i could kind of tell where everything is at in the room so that's how i would use my eq the renaissance compressor so the amazing thing about the renaissance compressor to me is that it gives us some options that you know the um la uh, 2a and 1176 doesn't give us so i will probably be using an electro which is the 1176 setting on the r comp and usually for a rap vocal i would never go with uh, an 1176 very early on because you know how a rap vocal is where like a fast tempo singing vocal you know that transient is going to make that needle move around a little too much it's going to kind of make the compressor pump which is not something you really want to all the time but with somebody like whitney houston where she's singing and the notes is longer you can definitely get away with something like an 1176 very early on i mean even if you have an apollo i would suggest that you know you want to try something between the la2a or 1176 while you're tracking some people like to use the 76 me personally i like to use either the la2a or the cl1b so that's what kind of you know brings me back to the renaissance compressor is that it's an optical compressor that really lets you go there and dial it in you know due to the nature of optical components it don't really let you go in there and play around with the settings like that which kind of do make it a little bit better because it's harder for you to mess up but in a situation like that you know the art comp is amazing because you can go opto and you could play around with the release time you could also play around with the attack time or listen to the sound that the artist tries to get keep that in my head put the keys in the ignition and try to drive us to where we need to get to when I'm producing. So after that, next thing I go is a C6, you know. I like the C6. I like multi-band compressors a lot because they're very non-invasive, you know, so they don't actually get in the way of all the hard work that the artist done did. You know, if I'm recording Whitney Houston, she just in the studio going off, I'm going to be like, God, she ripping it. So I'm going to have to figure out how I can make this sound better. I got to get in where I fit in without trying to change anything because it's Whitney Houston. You know, if you was to record any person who just got a lot of talent like that, you just want to make sure that you don't get in the way. You want it to be like almost like you're not even in the room. Like that's how natural the vibe is just flowing. So with the C6, I, you know, I, I would really like it because maybe you know when Whitney gets into her higher notes you know sometimes when people sing they, hey, they start they start hitting them notes they start going up and up and up and up and up and sometimes you know it could kind of get out of control so that's where the C6 comes in you know it lets us do compression on the individual parts of the um, you know um, material that we put through it and I like the C6 a little bit more better than the C4 because it gives me the opportunity to have the uh, free floating bands so maybe if I didn't want to be too crazy what I can do is I can just use one of the free floating bands maybe in the lower end maybe if i just kind of heard a little boomy kind of build up but it's a little bit better than like a static compressor or a static eq because it's not going to be working all the time i'm getting all the positives of cleaning it up when, when you know when she starts to build up but also getting um you know away from the negatives of having it just kind of sound like something's missing from the vocal so that's why static eq you got to be very careful with it because sometimes you can start trying to notch out stuff and now it kind of feels like the vocal is lacking the soul and that's the main part about whitney houston why we love her 
because she just had that soul when she was singing. You know, she used to dig deep down inside her heart to go get that notion. And, ah, so that's something that you always want to keep as an engineer. But in the beginning, you got to understand, you got to be able to identify that, hey, that's a strength. And I need to find a way to, 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 to put it to the forefront. It's like a talent show. I need to put the spotlight on it. So after that, for my vintage component, usually what I do is I always use like basic stuff in the beginning, like a basic EQ, basic compressor, so that when my vi vintage component comes in, you can really hear a tonal difference. You know, I let the vintage component do most of the hard work. So that's usually in my channel strip. I would definitely go with something like the API Vision um, channel strip just due to the preamp. First of all, I love the way the preamp distorts. And I know like on my favorite Whitney Houston album, which is um, it's called I'm Your Baby Tonight. I know the engineer. I seen a lot of his you know work and his his videos and he said that he actually used the um, API preamp which has the um, op amp preamp in, in, inside of it to give it some of that distortion. I just love the way it distortions distorts and it's very like mid range for it, so it just helps bring Whitney's voice uh right in front of you, so it feels like she's talking to you in real life. That's the main thing about making music. I feel like is you need to sometimes you got to make it larger than life feel like it's way bigger than what it is but most of the time i feel like especially for hip-hop r&b you know our type of music you got to make it relatable because that's what the people is looking for that's what the streets is looking for they're looking for something that they could be like man i remember when i went through something like that too so then you know after that i'll probably use something like the um the filter as well nothing too crazy because i know the filter has a very gentle octave so you got to always pay attention to you know the db octave of the filters as well because that might make it a little bit less or more aggressive sometimes you might be like man i gotta roll off a little bit more because the eq um the high pass filter is kind of a little bit more gentle depending on the octave so after that i would definitely i'll definitely go in there and dial in with a 560l and i love the 560l because it was like fab filter before fab filter so what it does it has all these little kind of fixed frequencies that let you just get in there and get really precise and i think that's very important too with somebody like whitney houston you know you want to figure out how can i bring out just that little detail that little that little mouth movement the little nuances all of that little stuff so i can make this more than the song because when a song becomes something more than the song when it becomes a soundtrack to somebody's life that's when they could really make the connection to it that's when they could really be like man 10 years ago i remember i was listening to this song and I remember this song was there for me when nobody else was there for me. And I mean, I had moments like that, too, in my life. So I feel like that's the most important thing with making music is always trying to make the soundtrack to people life you know like what do people need emotionally how can i bring the emotions out of the music and i think the 550l is a really good tool with that and i just love the api vision channel strip just due to the fact that you know you get the whole circuitry the whole circuit flow and even the fader is colored so sometimes what you could do is you could push push this fader to get a little bit more um distorted and then after that you know your your fader on your doll you could just pull it down so you got to understand the difference between a colored fader and a transparent fader because it's definitely Definitely something that's real the waves mv2 this plugin is very simple but the great thing about it is it's like kind of like a hybrid baby type of compression situation so you have the low level compressor which kind of brings the ground level signal all the way up and you have the high level compression which takes the top you know brings up it brings the the top signals down so either way the most important thing with the mv2 is that it helps add body in detail so that's the main thing that i want with a whitney houston vocals i kind of want some of that rumble i want a little bit of that mud i want a little bit of the crackle and the popping that's coming from you know the microphone and the room and all that stuff because that's what makes it feel real that's what makes it feel 3d that's what that's what makes it like if somebody's in the street and they walk in and they minding their own business they say what what song is that what song is that because it's jumping out to them and sometimes it's not about you know your reverb or all them little them little extra stuff is really about the main meat and the butter you know if you run in a restaurant the main way you're gonna get people in your restaurant is you say oh yeah i got this steak i got this chicken and rice i got this whole meal so you don't get people into a restaurant by saying yeah i got some snacks i got some chips nobody gonna care about that people don't care about the side dish people care about the main dish so that's what the mv2 that's what it helped do it helped bring out the nuances the ha ah, that's the main dish that's the main beat that that's the main rice beans meat and chicken to the vocal you know so that's what i love about um you know this plugin right here because it's very underrated i see a lot 
lot of people, you know, a lot of professionals, they definitely use it. And if you ever do try it, you will see that it's very good for something like parallel compression. Maybe you want to squash the vocal or maybe you want to control the vocal or maybe you just want to only use the low level and bring out the ground level, the over loud 76. So I like this 1176 a lot just due to the fact that it's going to give me um, mid side processing. So I think if in a situation like this, I'm going to do a video on this trick. But what I would do is I would have like Whitney Houston's um, vocals, her background vocals, everything all routed to one fader you know after i did all the processing i probably put a mid side 1176 and then you know uh compress the sides a little bit more and have a faster release so i can make the sides pump a little bit so when the background vocals come in ha, huh, you know it's kind of giving some more movement so sometimes mid side compression is an incredible thing because it really just helps the the music jump off the page it really gives the listener a point of reference to know okay my background vocals is moving they wavy but the lead vocal is kind of sturdy and it's moving front to back so that's what i would do you know with the mid i probably go with something very light the um you know the four ratio uh, in the mid channel and same thing probably with the size too but depending on that i would just go over there and dial it in but for sure on the the, the background vocals definitely i will have something that has a fast release just so i could get it kind of pumping and who 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 kind of like a little helicopter little piece and then after that you know we're gonna go with the reverb i go with the abbey rose chamber i really like the abbey rose chamber because it gives us the opportunity to, to use the drive so you get the opportunity of really just getting some more distortion into to um you know the, the the chamber reverb and sometimes using that distortion in the reverb is gonna is what's gonna give it a little bit of hair you know think about tory lanes and his music if you go listen to tory lanes music you're gonna hear like the reverb just kind of sound like it's a little bit hairy but the good thing about that is it just really helps the listener develop that you know ability to reach out to the music and feel like wow that just kind of feels a little bit fuzzy so that's what the human body do you know it uses um taste you know touch hearing you know feeling all of those things to identify what something is to help the message come through and that's why i will use the abbey road chamber it's very rich it's very creamy and it just gives us a bunch of modern options that they probably didn't have back in the day back in the day they just had their little room they had a little microphone their little speaker they had to do what they had to do to get it sounding like that but you don't have to worry about all of that you got a plug-in right here that's gonna make everything easy for you and it gives you multiple um reverb types so you know stone hits a certain way a chamber hit a certain way even a mirror hits a certain way so that's what you got to understand you know how a signal hits a certain type of material and you could even pay attention in your house like just pay attention when you in your living room then you when you go to your bathroom pay attention to how it sound different so yeah and then the last thing for my parallel compression i'm definitely gonna go with something like the um fairchild i go with the 660 just because i love the way the very new tools they just bring everything forward if you got a good vocalist you need to figure out how to to put that flashlight on them so the listener can be like whoa that's a really good singer right though you know people gotta come from the song and you know not worry about you as an engineer you don't ever try to take the spotlight from the artist that's the main thing that song is not about you it's the people's life work it's their legacy because whenever somebody die you know god forbid whenever somebody die what's the first thing that people go to is their music so that's why for me like i don't play around with people's music like i really try to make their music sound like them just because i'm thinking about their family i'm thinking about their legacy and it's really that serious because when people die first thing they go to is their music so that music is a connection for people to make to somebody even if they no longer here with us for example like whitney houston when i listen to her music i feel like man i feel like i knew whitney houston like the way she's singing in that room i'm like ah and i like the six sister because you know the 660 is the mono version of the fairchild the fairchild very creamy very rich and it's going to help give that a little bit of that soft type of compression effect. I think the tubes is important because with a vocal like Whitney Houston, you don't ever want it to be too harsh when she hitting the high notes. So the Fairchild, the components inside of it is a very cool way to take the edge off of things. So pretty much that's the only thing that I got here. If you guys do have any more comments or questions down below, go ahead and drop it for any more ideas or any change I want me to see do. All right. Just want to say thanks a lot for being a great part of my YouTube family. I really do appreciate y'all now. Peace.